Hey Cupcakes and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm bringing you Carnage. I have worked so freaking hard on this look and I hope you guys love it just as much as I do. Let's get into the video. We're going to be starting out by making the eyes first. So with this two liter bottle, I'm going to be taking a Sharpie and drawing out the eye shape for Carnage. And then with an X-Acto knife, I'm going to start making a hole into the bottle. Once I get it far along, then I'll take some scissors and I'll cut out the rest of that shape. You're going to repeat this four times. We're going to be making two lenses for the right side of the face and two lenses for the left side of the face and then putting cheesecloth in between. That way we're able to see out of the lenses. Whenever you're done making whichever side you're doing first, make two lenses of that side. Take one of the lenses, you're gonna flip it inside out. You're gonna lay it on another two liter bottle and then cut out that shape. That way that you have lenses for the left side and lenses for the right side so that you don't end up with four lenses for the same side. <laughs> now that our lenses are cut, I'm just gonna take two of them, stack them on top of each other. Make sure everything looks nice, like all of the lines kind of match up. With some white cheesecloth, I'm going to be laying some white cheesecloth in between the lenses. I'm doing about two layers of cheesecloth. That way you can hopefully see out of it. And I'm taking this super glue gel and the end of a brush, and I'm just kind of brushing that onto the cheesecloth and getting it all nice and saturated. Then I'm taking a lens and I'm going to be sandwiching it, making sure it's nice and dry, usually for 10 seconds. After that, I'm just cutting around the cheesecloth leaving a little extra on the sides just in case I need a little extra. Next, I'm taking some Plastiline. This is an amazing clay that never dries, so you can continue to work with it. What I'm doing is I'm building up the jaw because this mannequin face is actually much smaller than my own. So I'm building up the jaw wider than mine and then wider on top of that to match Carnage. I also flattened the nose so that the nose was nice and flat so that whenever we add the liquid latex, it'll be nice and flat for Carnage's face. Next, we're gonna be making liquid latex paste. Now, I get so many questions on how I measure this. I do not measure this. This is completely by eyeball. I like to get the cheapest liquid latex, like Walmart liquid latex or Amazon. The watery it is, the better. And then with the flour, I'll just coat like a nice, layer right on top of the liquid latex that I've already poured into the cup. Not very thick. I'll give it a nice swirl and then once it starts thickening up, it needs to be about a cookie dough paste. If it's too watery, it's not going to be easy to work with. You'll need to add a little bit more flour until you're almost at that cookie dough consistency. Right here, it's too thin and I need to add a little bit more flour to it in order for it to be thick enough to stick onto the mask, especially me putting it on a mannequin. It needs to be able to stick almost like standing up so versus it laying down. So add a little bit more flour. This will thicken it up and then it'll be a perfect paste consistency to apply. I'm going to be taking the liquid latex paste and my little fork and I'm just going to be layering that all over top of the mannequin face and the clay that we laid down. I'm going to just kind of do like heap loads on it just to start getting it spread around because with liquid latex paste, you do have about 10 to 15 minutes of work time with it, but it depends on how thick the paste is. So the thinner the paste starts getting, the faster drying time. So no matter what, I always try to work real fast with this product because I'd rather have more time to play with it later on when I need to shape it. So I'm just kind of getting it all nice and saturated onto the mannequin. Once I'm ready to start smoothing it out, I will pour some liquid latex into a little cup and then either dip my finger into it or some tools and then help smooth out the liquid latex. I'm going to start grabbing my lenses so I can get a good spot for them to get situated. And then I'm laying some liquid latex right on top of the border of those lenses to get them nice and stuck in there. After the jawline starts drying down a little bit, then I go back in with some more paste and I add a little bit more gradually so I can build out that chin. 
this isn't a piece that I can like dry real quick, like popping it into the microwave. So I just kind of have to wait for it to dry and then add it bit by bit. After this, I'm taking one of my spatula tools and then also my finger in some liquid latex paste just to start smoothing it out and getting a really nice smooth base. You don't have to smooth it out. I chose to do that. At first I wanted it to be ripply and then I changed my mind, but it would be really cool to make it ripply. You could like take a toothpick and like dig it into the liquid latex paste to make like really cool ridges and really cool designs if you wanted to. So just an idea there. While the paste is still wet, this is the perfect time to start shaping the face and making sure that the jawline and the mouth are exactly the way that you want them to be. So I did look off of a couple different reference images and there's so many different Carnage comic looks out there and not a lot of looks for the new Venom 2 movie since it hasn't been released yet. But I just tried to make it look as close as I could to the image that was released for Venom 2. With the mask, I am making sure that it comes up all the way to the top of my head so that when I put on a bald cap, it's gonna blend in real nicely to my head. So bring it back all the way back to the ears and all the way to the top of your head. I made some plastic teeth using polymorph plastic. I made some larger sizes and some smaller sizes. If I were to do this again, I would actually make the larger ones a little bit smaller so I had more medium to small sizes. So I'm putting a little bit of some of the smaller ones all around the medium to large size teeth that I already have going on to make it look a little bit more fuller. However, I'm just adding in the teeth right into the liquid latex paste. It is going to make the jaw move around a little bit, but don't get discouraged. Keep adding the teeth. Then at the very end, you can have that opportunity to fix the jawline again, make it all nice and smooth. And then I just let this sit and dry so that the teeth can dry right into the mask. If they end up falling out later on, we'll just glue them right back in. With black liquid latex paste, I'm using the end of a brush to make the like venom around Carnage's eyes. This way I know where I'm gonna be putting the red paint and I know where the, the black is going to be at on the lenses. I'm also doing this because I'm going to be taking black hot glue on top of the liquid latex and I wanna make sure that when I put the black hot glue on top, it's not going to completely melt through the lenses and damage my whole piece. So that was the main reason for doing this as well as becoming an outline for me in the future when I add hot glue on top. With red body paint, I'm laying down a really thick coat on top of the mask, and this is going to set for a really nice base. I'm just doing one coat of this, and then we're going to move on to the teeth. To paint the teeth, I'm going in with my Skin Illustrator Onset Palette using the yellow shade and the purple red shade. Using the yellow shade, I'm going to be painting the entire tooth. And then the purple to red shade, I'm gonna be painting more towards the base. And I'll also add in just a little bit of black as well, just to make those teeth pop that much more. To make my life easier, I did pull out all of the teeth from the top and I laid all of them down flat in a row the way the exact way that I pulled them out so that I know exactly how to put them back in. Off camera, I glued the upper teeth back in and I painted them and then I also painted around the mouth. I'm going back to painting the mask and I'm using a wide brush dipped in a reddish black paint to graze on top of the mask and kind of hit all of the high points that are on the mask. This way it makes it have a very nice ripply effect and gives it a little bit more texture to the mask without actually having to add texture to it, especially since later on we will add some texture on top of it. I got these black hot glue sticks from Amazon and I'm just applying them around the lenses going right on top of where that venom is. It looks like there's like venom that's around his mouth and then also around each of the lenses. So I'm going to be taking the hot glue and just trying to make little squiggly lines around the lenses and the mouth. 
I wasn't too pleased with how the jaw was looking, so I decided I was gonna make some more liquid latex paste, and I'm applying it to the jawline and then smoothing it all out again. I just needed that jawline to be longer and thicker. He has like no chin, so I was like, yeah, we gotta go back and fix that. After I did the whole jawline, I went ahead and painted it and just speeded it up to process so that we can get on to the next part. We have reached the final step in our paint job. And I'm taking some red acrylic paint and I'm just grazing over the top of the mask just like I did with the reddish black shade and just going to make this whole thing pop. It needed to be a lot more red. The red got pretty muted whenever I put it on top of that liquid latex paste. So this acrylic is just gonna make it pop and it's gonna be ready to take off the freaking styrofoam mask. I was so excited to finally remove this guy from the styrofoam mask. However, very nervous because I did not wanna mess up this piece. So whenever taking this mask off of your styrofoam mask or your life cast, make sure that you are pulling up each of the edges all the way around the mask and you just want to maneuver a little bit by little bit but completely going around the mask for this you just want to remove all of the clay that's on the inside so just peel that out nicely then we're going to trim all of the edges around the mask just to get a really nice straight cut around the mask i wanted to cover the whole inside of the mouth so you couldn't see my face so i dipped some cheesecloth into some water with some black food dye dyed the cheesecloth and then super glued it over the mouth. This way I can still breathe, but you can't see my mouth. And we've finally arrived at the paint time. I'm taking a sponge and I'm dipping it into some red body paint from Mehron. I'm applying that all over my neck, chest, and my left arm. For the body, I'm taking a red and black body paint and I'm looking off some reference photos of some muscle anatomy. I was quite stumped on what to do on the body and I came across some YouTube videos of people painting sculptures where the whole body was just muscle. So that's what I'm gonna be doing here is just going off those reference images to create the outline. I don't want it to look super realistic. I still want it to have kind of that comic book feel, but I don't know, be kind of like right in the line. I'm going back over some of my lines and making them a lot thicker black. And then I'm adding some shadows in between where those muscles are meeting up with each other. But I'm just looking off those reference images to get a good idea of this. I have never done muscle before, so this is completely new to me. I kind of was like just going at it and hopes that it was just gonna turn out good. <laughs> I'm going to start adding highlights with white body paint. I'm using this little nail art brush and I'm adding just the tiniest little highlight strokes for just the highlights on the muscles. From here, since the highlights are so, so bright, I'm dipping into this Joker palette into the red shadow, and then I'm going to go in with a fluffy brush and I'm gonna make all of those white strokes I just did this very bright red. So now we have not as much white and a lot more red to give it a little bit more of a realistic feel kind of, but also not look so cartoonish with such bright white lines. I'm taking a small shader brush and dipping it into some black eyeshadow. I'm going over the shadows that I've already created and I'm just deepening them up to make them look a lot more darker, a lot more pushed back. The black that I have thankfully is such a bold black that it really pushes those blacks. But if you have a black that's just not pushing it as much, you can definitely go on top with just some more black body paint and blend it out a little bit. But yeah, the black really, really pushes it. I'm very happy. I'm applying a hairnet. This way it's gonna pull all of my hair back so when I apply the bald cap, none of the liquid latex or anything gets to my hair. Next, I'm putting on this cheap old bald cap that I got from Amazon. And with some liquid latex, I'm just going around the parameter of my face so I can glue down that bald cap. I just wait until the liquid latex gets a little translucent and I just stick down the bald cap working from my forehead down the sides of my face and I do glue it down a little bit underneath my ears. Once I get that nice and stuck on there, I just take some bobby pins and then pin the bald cap to my hair this way I don't have to try to liquid latex it in the back. Nobody's gonna see it back there anyway. I'm taking that red body paint from before and I'm applying it all over the bald cap with that same sponge. 
I'm making sure to load up the sponge before applying it to my bald cap because if it's not loaded up, it will end up leaving watermarks on there and then that's really difficult to hide. So just load up your sponge and just apply it delicately. To make that like venomous slime, I mixed up some gelatin, some glycerin and water and some black food dye. I heated it up in the microwave for like 10 seconds made sure it was nice and ready for my skin at a good temperature. And I'm just applying it to my skin with the back of a brush. I'm just trying to make squiggly lines and kind of pull it down my skin and make it look like really weird. I'm also going to cover my bald cap and then I covered a little bit of the mask because I wasn't able to actually see the mask fully once I put the mask on. So I'm just taking some liquid latex around the perimeter of the mask itself and then applying it all over my forehead and my jawline and then applying this mask very carefully, trying to get it nice and situated on my face. I thought I could see out of this, but it was pretty difficult to see out of it, even with the cheesecloth, but it looks so sick. Heck yes. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you learned lots of new information and you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please give me a like and subscribe. I would absolutely love that. Working hard on making these videos for you guys. Have a sick Halloween. Let's freaking get it for spooky season.